Today we're going to talk about the role of expectations, we'll take a look at the M16, and we'll also do some food for thought and things I like. I am Simon the Zealot, and you are watching Beyond the Crossroads. Let's kick it. Okay, so today's big idea is the power of expectations. Generally speaking, people respond to stimuli. As a leader, you have a unique opportunity to provide the stimuli in your organization, and expectations are one way to do that. If you have determined that certain values are good for the individual, good for the group, and good for the organization, you can encourage them by incorporating them into the standards for proficiency and conduct in your organization. Expectations are your way of holding the entire organization, including yourself, to those standards. And more personally, expectations are the way that you communicate your values to the people that you lead. Here's the thing about people. We are not immune to our environment. This means that people have a high likelihood to change depending on what environment they find themselves in. That's bad news if the environment encourages harmful values. It's good news if the environment encourages healthy values and if uh, those values are promulgated both in word and deed. That means that people can experience substantial growth if growth is demanded of them. And the organization can experience growth if all of its people are running in the same direction, so to speak. Now, I don't want that to sound like people are entirely the products of their environment. Every person must take responsibility for their own life. So bottom line is it's on each of us to make the right decisions and the wrong decisions that we make are first and foremost our responsibility. With that said, I do want to acknowledge that environment is a huge factor in a person's development. It can turn bad to good and good to great and do the same thing in reverse. Moreover, environment matters in a unique way if you're a leader. If you are in any position of authority, you're not just answering for yourself. You're answering in part for all the people who have to deal with the culture that you've created. What this also means for you is that even though you are also human and you're also susceptible to your environment, you have to have a greater resistance to a bad environment. And that's in part the job that the Marine Corps pays its officers to do, to have the intelligence, tenacity, and foresight to make the Marine Corps environment the best environment that it can be. Now, I want to provide an example of the power of expectation. And uh, this comes from the civilian world, but it illustrates my point all the same. There was a, once a brand new professor who was assigned to teach the first three sections of a class. One of his peers, a senior faculty member, was shocked that the college had assigned this rookie section two. The colleague told him that section two was the honors class, the cream of the crop. They were the brightest minds that the college had to offer. Everybody wanted to teach Section 2. This uh, new professor took this to be truth and got prepared to teach. On the first day of classes, Section 1 came in, and uh, it was a good class. Solid, but nothing spectacular. After break, Section 2 came in, and the difference was palpable. The professor could hardly control the enthusiasm and pace of learning. After Section 2 came section three, and they were just like section one. Solid, but nothing at all like section two. This disparity in performance continued throughout the semester. In fact, section two was putting more content in their papers than section one and section three combined, and the grades in section two were significantly higher than the other two sections. One day, late in the semester, the professor was walking with the academic dean, and he could hardly contain his excitement talking about Section 2 and how far they exceeded their peers. He thanked the dean for giving him the honors class. The dean stopped, turned to him, and said, Well, I'm glad that you're having so much success, but I need to tell you something that might surprise you. Section 2 is not an honors class. We canceled that program last year to distribute the talent. What the professor realized that day was that there was not one difference between the sections. For all intents and purposes, circumstantially, everything was the same. 
The only difference was his expectation of Section 2's potential and the way that he projected his expectations on them. The big takeaway here is that uh, people will have the potential to rise to the occasion, and it is on leadership to give them an occasion to rise to. Now, I've put together the following graphic to break an organization down into eight types of people based on three qualities. I'm still working on this, so you'll need to stow it and see how it squares up with your experience. I'm just giving you guys an early look at this uh, new idea. First, let me define these terms. I define smart as some combination of competence, intelligence, and prudence. You could call this proficiency. I define squared away as administratively responsible and having initiative. You could call this conduct. And finally, I define noble as having our core values, honor, courage, and commitment. The more common definition is below as well. Another way to say this is that nobility is looking out for other people and caring about the environment at large. So you see that this graph uses three colors. Green is the promised land. This is where you want your team to be. This is them at their best. Smart, squared away, and noble. Red is where you don't want your team to be. In the graph, this is a combination of the undesirable version of each quality. But red generally means the point at which a person is doing more harm than good for the organization. Now, I believe that the vast majority of people are not beyond help, but a person in the red is the kind of person that will need a tremendous amount of help, which takes a tremendous amount of resources, which may not always be available. Yellow is for everyone else. We all have strengths and weaknesses. Green and red make yellow. So I use this color to signify that people in these categories can go either way. They have the potential to be fully green in the right circumstances, but if some undesirable quality is allowed to persist or is encouraged, they could go red. It all depends on what is allowed or expected. The big point in all of this is that you have the power just by setting and maintaining the standard to change lives for the better or for the worse. Now, the only caveat that I will offer is that people have to change themselves. You can't do it for them. However, most people, especially when they're younger, will be willing to learn in the right circumstances. Besides this one caveat, the kind of culture that you create through what you expect of your team can either encourage or discourage their personal development and ultimately the development of the organization. So that's the big idea for today. Demand the best out of your Marines and give them your best and they will give you their best. Give me something to shoot. This week's weapon of the week is the Everloven M16. The M16 was designed by Eugene Stoner for Armalite which was the weapons division of Fairchild Aircraft. Stoner was designing this weapon at a time when the military was looking to replace the M1 and a lot of its other small arms from World War II. And their solution was the M14 rifle, but through a series of events, the M16 won out and became the standard issue weapon for the United States military. Stoner's original model was the AR-10, AR standing for Armalite. And the big innovation here was using materials like aluminum and fiberglass from the aircraft industry and applying those to weapons. The second iteration of this weapon was the AR-15, which is a term that still survives to this day for the style of weapon. And among other changes, the AR-15 used a smaller cartridge, which is the same one that we use today, the 5.56 by 45 millimeter cartridge or as it's known colloquially, the 5.56. The designs for the AR-15 were sold to Colt in 1959, and the AR-15 was adopted by the military in the early 60s, and the military uh, redesignated the weapon as the M16. Colt produced M16s for the military until about 1990. The M16 was first used broadly in the Vietnam War. 
Design oversights that led to a high rate of weapon failure gave the M16 a bad reputation in its early deployment. So the military's response to this was the M16A1, which corrected a lot of those deficiencies and was introduced in 1967. The M16A2 was the next iteration, included more fixes, including the uh, brass deflector, and the full auto fire was replaced with a three round burst to conserve ammo. The M16A3 was a further upgrade with uh, Picatinny rails for mounting optics, etc. The A3 also had full auto fire and uh, was a limited issue weapon primarily to certain units in the Navy. The M16A4 is the rifle that uh, is used at OCS and it's similar to the A3 except it's got burst fire and not full auto. Since the early 90s, M16s have been manufactured by the American arm of the Belgian firearms company Fabrique Nationale Herstal, and a lot of companies still make some variation of the AR-15. Something on your mind? This week's Food for Thought was uh, said by Damon John, who's an investor on the show Shark Tank. Uh, the quote was as follows, if you hang out with four broke guys, you'll be the fifth. This quote speaks to the necessity of being careful of the company that you keep in your personal life. Uh, you want to stay away from people whose habits you do not want to adopt. The only exception to this would be if you are in a clearly defined mentoring relationship where the goal is to inculcate somebody else with your habits and your values. You got my attention. Finally, this week's thing I like is this little uniform guide booklet. This is a must-have post-OCS as you try to figure out where everything goes. It's called uh, Look Sharp, and it covers all ranks, enlisted and officer, and uh, just about all the uniforms, male and female. It's available at the MCX for around $10. That's how much I got it for. Okay, so that's it for today's episode. As always, uh, leave any feedback below or contact me directly. And as always, remember, it is not about you. Stay hungry, stay humble, stay out of trouble. Take care. I'm about to drop the hammer.